Hey, welcome to my channel, Josh Gordon Music. This is a Line 6 PodGo video, and we're going to look at using the global EQ function in the PodGo Edit application. Now, normally, for me, I don't really find much use for it in the application itself because I'll use global EQ if I'm at a gig, and I know that I like the preset I dialed in in my home studio, but at the gig, you know, venue to venue, the, the, the acoustics are going to change, how, how things are going to, so your preset's going to sound one, one way at one venue and it could sound quite different in another venue simply because of the structure of the building and whatnot, all the acoustics, you know, the sonic differences, blah, blah, blah. So learning to use global EQ on the unit itself is a valuable tool. But there are times where, say, in the home studio, you know, you're doing a recording and whatnot and, or you get a track and, and you're recording a, part for a client or something and you, you know that you your preset does sound good and you don't want to change it well you can use the global EQ here um, to tweak it and it, so you'll tweak the sound of the preset but you won't tweak the preset itself and using the global EQ like whether you're using it in pod go edit or on their unit you're going to change the sound of all of your presets because you it's the global EQ for the unit but anyways there are some, some circumstances like I said uh, you can use this global EQ because you might need it at the time of a recording and that way you won't have to touch your preset but you can at least affect the sound of it so that your whatever part you're recording for whatever track it is that maybe it'll sit better in the mix using the global EQ in the pod go edit so anyways let's have a look at it so we'll go to the window here menu select global EQ and then you're gonna get this here so I'll move this up a little bit so you get this global EQ window okay so quickly you have a low cut, you know, you have a, a, a low frequency here, a mid frequency here, a high, and a high cut. So I'll play my, I'll play my uh, preset that I dialed in, just a whatever rock sound. Okay. So let's play around with this. So we're going to basically learn what these things mean, you know, it's not really about the preset. So. Let's start with low cut. So low cut, basically, if you when you start sliding it here, if I can get a handle on it, there you see, you see that little curve. You're 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 basically what you're saying here is like any frequencies that are on the left side of this curve, you're cutting it out. So let's drag this. Let's drag this more. Like if I drag it to the middle. Okay, so you, so you hear that difference, right? Like, so you don't want that. But generally, for a guitar, I find, you know, once you once you get down to like, I don't know, I'd say about eighty, you know, maybe eighty hertz and whatnot. It's not, you know, the guitar isn't going to really go past that too too much. So I mean, let's let's leave it here at seventy four. Okay, now if I reset it and go back to, you know, everything goes back to zero. So you, you, there's no difference, right? But that's the thing. I don't, I don't want to cut out too much bass. So I, but what I want to do is basically, I don't need these frequencies anyway. So I'm just going to take it out of this track and, you know, save some, some space on the file size. All right, so now let's go to the low peak. Now, I'll just explain the freak, the Q, and the gain, and I'll just do it with the low, and we, we will go through each of each of these uh, for a sonic test, but I'll only explain it once because you see the, the controls are the same here, freak, freak, Q. So the frequency, as you, I'm sure, figured out and, and know, it's the frequency here of the hertz. So, okay, let's say, Let's say I want it a little, a little more bassy, even though I've cut out some of the un, you know, the useless low frequencies here, you know, like from 74 to I think it will go down to 20 here, because because there's not, they're not going to have any effect on your sound. But let's say I still want a little more bass. So let's say I want to go 130 hertz. Okay, so that's basically your, your the frequency is you're picking the hertz. Okay, and that'll be the same for the mid and the high. Now Q is the quality, right? So the Q, basically the lower, 
I'll start moving it here. The lower, the lower the Q is basically, it's a curve. You'll see a curve here, like, okay, and, I, and I'll, I'll touch the gain. So basically the, I'm telling the, uh, the global EQ window here that I want to increase the 130 Hertz frequency by let's say 6.2 decibels. But you see the curve here, but say, all this around here is going to get affected. Let's say I wanted a more narrow margin. So basically the more you slide it to the right, you see, you're more like you're notch filtering it. So you're, you're honing in more on it. So let's say I want to put it to 5.1. <laughs> Let's say I want to do more. All right to fat to fatten it up. All right, I probably wouldn't do that much, but let's just, you know, for a, for a sonic example, here we are. Okay, so let's say I like that. It gives me a little more beef but not too uh, grumbly and, and, and farty and whatnot. So now let's say I want to go to the mid. So again, you, you know, you want to pick your frequency. So it's like, well, usually I find somewhere between 600 to 800 is where, you know, you can get like a little nasal or a honk that just isn't ear pleasing. So I'm, I want to lower it. So I'm going to go slide it here. And let's say I, Let's say I want to lower it by this much, 4.1 dB, but again, I don't want too much around here affected. I don't want 400 or 500. So again, I want to narrow the quality curve and notch filter it more. So let's go here. Okay. And now with the high, Let's take the high to, let's take it to about 6.8. And again here, I'm going to be a little more notch filtering. And let's say, let's make it brighter. Okay, now that sounded fairly ear pleasing to me. It gave it just a little more, a little sharpness and brightness, but not too much. You saw you as you heard when I, you know, I put the gain all the way up. It was just too fuzzy, and you know, well, for for me, it was too fuzzy, anyways. So, and then we come to the high cut. So, same premise as the low cut. We're just, you know, when we slide it to the left, we're we're cutting out some of this super high frequencies. And I don't think, you know, I don't know exactly the maximum frequency of a guitar's range, but I don't think. It's, it goes all the way up to uh, 20 here. So let's play. Okay, so here we're at about 11.2. So we're cutting a little there. So let's say I will just, I don't want to shave off that much. Let's say 15. Okay, now I like that. That sounds, that sounds great and it didn't, and as you see, I haven't touched any of the parameters on my preset because I like the preset how it is. But say in this instance, by using this global EQ, let's say I'm, I'm tracking something for a client. Well, I'm just going to use the global EQ for this so that I don't touch my preset. But now this sound is going to sit better in this guy's mix, or I think so anyways, right? So you can use that tool. And, um, and, and again, here, going back to the high cut, see now everything here, we don't need anyways because it's not affecting anything, right? You, you know, when we got closer to the 11 hertz, then, uh, the, uh, sorry, 11,000 kilohertz mark, that's when we started to hear, oh, okay, now we're shaving off a little bit of the brightness, right? So, so that's basically it. So let's, re let's, you know, quick review. The frequency is your hertz, kilohertz, which one that you want to, you know, focus on, the Q, the quality of it, the more you increase the quality, the narrower of the curve so that you can hone in and filter, notch filter it more. Or if you want to have a, a more of a curve so that you want to hit an umbrella of frequencies, 
then put a lower Q factor. And then gain is either up because you want more of it, you want more of that frequency, or you have a negative gain because you want less of the frequency. And then when you're done, let's 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 play this. <laughs> Okay, I said, okay, I finished my work and or I finished the gig now and now I'm gonna go on to another venue, but I don't want these settings. So guess what? Hit the reset button. And there you go. My preset sound of my preset is back to normal. The preset itself was never touched. And there you go. And it's a great little a great little tool uh, to use for those situations, you know. And um, again, learn it, learn it as well on on the unit itself. Um, now I do have a video showing you how to use the global EQ on the unit itself, so check that one out. But again, this is I I, I wish that we kind of had this uh, graphic representation on the PodGo itself because I really love this um, how it's laid out, and for me it's. The visual is very, very important for me to see, and, uh, and then I can equate with my ears better um, the effect that it's having. Anyways, I've rambled long enough, but there you have it. There's a um, global EQ function in the PodGo Edit desktop editor application. So thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the viewers returning and new. I appreciate all subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, consider hitting that subscription button. And even uh, if you're so inclined, hit the notification bell so that you'll know when the next video comes out. Until then, take care. I hope 2023 has been good so far to all of you. And we got lots more pod goal videos and some HX stop. And uh, once I get more familiar with my Helix LT, I'm gonna throw some of those videos out there too. So line six, wonderful stuff. And let's, uh, let's again, let's have a great year guys. Okay, thanks for watching, take care.